we have uh, created these pods, Craig's idea, really good one of uh, different ones we're going to discuss each week. They're going to rotate around days, but first we'll do one, two, three, four, but it might be four, one, three, two, or something like that, depending on how the games go each week and which ones Bear talking about. Yeah, the pods will stay the same just yeah. for clarity. So you'll have Oklahoma State, Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech. You'll have Iowa State, West Virginia, Kansas, Kansas State. You'll have the American four plus or the yeah, the American three plus BYU since they all came in together and the pack schools all came in together. So I just thought that was the simplest way rather than trying to do region and be like, but put all the Texas schools together. It's just simpler, more clean cut, I think, to keep them kind of how they arrived. So yeah, um, we did this yesterday and we'll have it, I guess, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, since he and I won't be here on Fridays. And uh, it's just a, I think a clean way to make sure we talk about every game for at least a second, mm -hmm. uh, especially early on when there's 16 of them, <laughs> since you're not playing Pretty each sure. other, uh, you can kind of lose track of some of them. So this is just a, a way to kind of touch on everybody every week and give them some some level of time. Yeah, I still feel like I was overruled on this deal. I, I, no, I, see, I, what I, happened was, is I said, how about this idea so we make sure that we get everybody covered and not like with a guest, like we actually talk about them. And I said, and we'll do it in these pods like this, but what we'll do is we'll shift it. So like not every Tuesday at 5.30 will be the same exact pod every week. It might be one or the other. So that will be different. The groupings will stay together, but he came in, he's like, let's do Cincy, uh, Baylor, uh, UCF, and like Utah. And it's like, we need a there's training no, wheels before like, you're There's playing. nothing connecting those schools, really. Well, so, yeah, there is. There's 16 in the Big 12. There's yeah, more, but okay. it, this is just way clean cut because it just makes more sense to to remember them this way because they're they're grouped regionally or they were kind of set up this way. So yesterday it was pretty simple. Your, your Texas schools that had been here already plus Oklahoma State, yeah. and now we move on to this next grouping. Uh, well, here are the four that I didn't agree with this, but this this these four make sense. Kansas playing Thursday night. That's tomorrow night. Taylor McCarg is going to be at that game. Jalen Daniels, Lance Leipold ranked in the top 25 against Lindenwood. They're playing, of course, games in Kansas City. In fact, this game will be in Kansas City. Uh, I think this is get, uh, get Jalen Daniels back loose. See what you can do. Uh, score as many points as you can in two quarters. And then take his shoulder pads off. Yeah, I mean, they are 45-point favorites in this game. 45-point <laughs> favorites. So this is uh, going to be a bloodbath, and if not, that would be the bigger story. But really, this is, yeah, getting out there and getting Jalen Daniels loose and on the field once again. And, like, he gets a lot of the attention. I'm really excited to see Devin Neal. Like, I think Devin Neal is an exceptional player, and I'm really excited to see the receivers. Um, but... Here's Jeff Grimes. First time we've seen him since he was at Baylor, and they had an offense that was absolutely miserable to watch for a variety of different reasons that aren't all his fault. But he inherits a pretty good group of talent and obviously uh, a program that's hit its stride and is in a good place. So I'm, I'm curious to see how he just finds his way in and, and you know what that looks like compared to Andy Kotelnicki and if there's any drastic differences. I know it's pretty much going to be the same concepts, but – it is different, and and there are people who believe that that's a loss. Kotal Nicky to Penn State, that that's going to be where they dip a little bit. And I'm sure Jeff Grimes is going to be thrilled to prove people wrong, and I'm sure he's thrilled to inherit some of the weapons like Jalen Daniels and Devin Neal. So, mm. uh, yeah, this is this is not a game you're sweating at all if you're the Jayhawks. This is more about just kind of what do they look like uh, in you know with the changes from the offseason and just our first glimpse of them this season. So that's that's really all this the is. The young program, Lindenwood, started in 1990. This is just their 34th year. Um, they're located in St. Charles, Missouri. I didn't know much about them. It's one of those games that probably had an opening. You know, remember the, the games against Albany and Long Island that Baylor played because of that Law Tech moving on to a different non-conference game. And so Lindenwood, the Lions – and, uh, again, like you said, this is pretty much where you would think Kansas can just pick their score. Also, that's the Thursday game. Saturday, Kansas State, home against UT Martin. Um, again, same thing. Like, get Avery Johnson and Dylan Edwards and uh, DJ Giddens loose. Uh, get some continuity along that offensive line that's going to that's gonna need it because they lost some big-time players. But, ultimately, um, you know, Score as many points as you can, and when the band plays, the starters come out. 
Yeah, they are 37-point favorites, so this is very much like the Kansas-Lindenwood game, except for Kansas State is playing at their actual home field, which is that's something I do wonder about with the Jayhawks. If there's anything, too, like not playing at your home field, like if that's just weird moving around or or what, um, I don't think anything would be significant enough to like change this season. But it's just an interesting wrinkle to you know, what is otherwise uh, just a regular year. Um, so, yeah, if K-State at home, I mean, there's there's not much to this one. Uh, I'm sure if you're a K-State hardcore, there's more, like, down-in-the-depth types of things. Like, this freshman, I would love to see him when we're up by 35 in the third quarter. You know, those kinds of things, I think, is what you're looking forward to uh, as much as just health, getting out of this game, taking care of your business, getting Avery Johnson out, like, by halftime, if not earlier, and, yeah, just flexing your muscles, basically, and saying uh, – UT Martin, uh, here's your money. Pat on the butt, and uh, good luck to you the rest of the way. Yeah, and, and UT Martin, they're not. Yeah, this is this is a game where they're getting paid to play a non-conference game. And some teams, I saw some notes that I forgot which is a big boy school. Two games, non-conference games, they're paying people one point eight million dollars each to get the, their brains beat in. We see some of these games. This won't be one of them where teams get paid a lot of money and then they like South Alabama, Oklahoma State. But this this should be a Kansas State, do their thing, move on, and move on to the next game. Iowa State at home against North Dakota. Part of that conference, of course, most of it's been North Dakota State, Northern Iowa, and now South Dakota State that have had their great runs, North Dakota and Iowa State. Now, Northern Iowa beat Iowa State a few years yeah. ago, if you remember. Yeah, that's and, why I brought them up. Uh, now, uh, so I don't think Iowa State uh, is going to get caught napping when it comes to this. North Dakota is not North Dakota State. They're not South Dakota State. They're not Northern Iowa when it comes to that level. So this should be another one of those, you know, again, let's see what you got. Um, let's get the starters out. And I'm, I'm curious to see if the offense is a little bit more – uh, because you've got so many guys coming back that it's a little more wide open uh, than it has been. You know, you've got really good wide receivers. You've got Abu Sama at running back, uh, Rocco back again. Like Kenny, what steps does he take? And this will be interesting to see that for me. I think the defense is going to punish people. I think the offensive line will be solid. Uh, that's Iowa State. That's Matt Campbell. But will we see maybe uh, you know an extra level of hot sauce on this offense because of the the kind of depth that they have uh, across the board, which I'm not sure that they've ever had this many skilled players that are this good. They've had like one guy at each position, like a good quarterback, a good running back, a good wide receiver, a good tight end at the same time, but never maybe everybody where you've got two or three good wide receivers, really good tight end, excellent running back, a quarterback who's on the rise, all those things happening at once. Well, I mean, Taylor Mouser taking over as Iowa State offensive coordinator, so there's going to be a, a different look there as uh, he took over that job this offseason uh, from uh, from Nate Shieldhouse. So uh, I think, again, this is one of those that we're like the other two we're talking about in terms of the competitiveness that you're expecting, uh, more of a get-your-feet-wet type of a game as much as anything and stay healthy and just work on the things that you felt like as a coaching staff you needed to work on in this first game. Uh, hopefully you empty the bench. Uh, I do know – uh, with Iowa State as well, this this is uh, the 50th anniversary uh, of Jack Trice, so there's going to be, you know, I'm sure some celebrations planned, and this is the first stop on the the celebration of the 50 years. Uh, you got the new uniforms. I think they're wearing, like, their, their cardinal, I think, is the appropriate term for their shade of red. Uh, I'm looking forward to just, you know, seeing how, how those look. They were one of the many teams in the league that, that changed those up a little mm -hmm. bit this offseason, and, and the red ones uh, look pretty good from what I the pictures I've seen, so... You know, it's cool to see those out there uh, in, in live action. But, uh, yeah, this is a, a game where you fully expect Iowa State to, to name their score, have fun while they're doing it, and hopefully just get out of there healthy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I wish we had more compelling matchups, honestly. But, I mean, these three games, they're, they're all well, like 30-plus, 40-point favorites. Yeah, you know? uh, the Fighting Hawks, North Dakota. Oh, first uh, time these two teams are playing, too. So, just another little thing. Like, if you're into little tidbits like that, that these two teams have never played before. Hey, so This is a school that's won. 668 games. Now, again, Iowa State's a heavy favorite. They won a national title in 2001. They've won a bunch of conference titles. That conference just brings, you know, they've won. They've won a lot, but they've also won a game uh, or more against the FCS, uh, against the FBS teams we, because of the history we mentioned. So uh, there you go with uh, North Dakota. By the way, the uh, – uh, what was the game we mentioned before that? Uh, not Lindenwood. UT Martin, the Skyhawks. I like that's a unique type mm -hmm. mascot. Now, the game that is uh, could be a tremor. 
a game that could be an absolute adrenaline rush, a game that could be huge for West Virginia, but also for the Big 12 in Morgantown, West Virginia. Uh, noon, 11 o'clock Central Time kickoff, West Virginia, Penn State. I can't wait. Oh, um, this is my favorite game of the week. It really is. Um, and, and look, AM uh, and Notre Dame and, and Miami and Florida and Clemson and Georgia and all that, USC and LSU is great. I just think this one has so much more intrigue on it given West Virginia's uh, belief that they can be something more than what everybody outside of the Big 12 and outside of maybe Morgantown thinks they can be. And, you know, they were not quite ready to play Penn State last year, but I think they learned a lot about themselves in that game, and it fueled them on for the rest of the year to that 9-4 and four season. So I absolutely – uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm picking West Virginia to win this game. I think they're going to win. I think that they may bring back couch burning. They'll be so fired up in Morgantown. This is a huge thing for them. I think Garrett Green very rightfully uh, should feel a, a little bit snubbed by everybody talking about all these quarterbacks all over the place, and then he kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Uh, they've got a really good running game. Offensive line's back. Uh, defense should be pretty salty, so I see no reason why they should let James Franklin and, and Penn State roll in there and beat them. Yeah, I think uh, it's really unfortunate that college game day will not be at this game. I get there's, you know, the, the tie-ins that you have and why you make the decisions you do of where you're going to broadcast, but not have McAfee at one of the biggest West Virginia games in, in a while, at least, you know, this early in the season with the amount of hype that they have. I think that Yeah, he's sucks. broadcasting his show on Friday from there, I think. Yeah, okay, he is? Yeah, All right, I cool. Believe, well, that's great so, if he yeah. is, yeah. So if he's doing that, that that's freaking awesome. I, 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 you know, haven't seen that, but I, I, I believe that that would be a really smart move because when I initially saw that, I was like, oh, damn, game day is going to be it. Was it a Notre Dame and, and yeah. A&M instead? So I was thinking of McAfee on set, but if he'll be there the day before, then that's uh, that's great. But, yeah, I, I'm – I'm really torn because I totally see how this happens and how West Virginia wins this game, and yet I just can't pull the trigger all the way. Uh, Penn State, eight-point favorites. I still feel like they win this game. I think it's going to be a hell of a game, though. I think Paul hit a lot of the you know the high points in terms of the disrespect or just lack of respect for, for West Virginia um, nationally, regionally. Uh, certainly not locally. They expect to be pretty good, and we talked a good bit about Neil Brown and just kind of the attitude – that's emanating from there nowadays. Uh, I think they're going to give the Nittany Lions absolute hell. Uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, you know, Garrett Green doesn't outside outshine Drew Aller. Uh, you know, if you're gonna, you're going to you know put on a big performance, it's the game to do it. So I, I can't wait to see this because um, West Virginia. You talk about chips on the shoulder. Everybody says it to the point of like it doesn't even mean anything. But they they've got a real chip on the shoulder that's been hanging on there for a while now, and they're pretty good based on what we know. So this is a huge opportunity. That crowd's going to be insane in the atmosphere. I, I wish I could be there, but uh, I lean Penn State, but I will not be shocked in any way, shape, or form if if they're going nuts in Morgantown on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, there's a, a press release, and I, I had seen this earlier in the week. He will be doing his show from the campus. Okay, great, uh, great. At Green Space outside the Life Sciences building. That's his alma mater. Uh, and uh, you can start to enter the area as early as nine o'clock central or eastern and on that Friday. It's been that's great. I, I didn't know that, so that's that's news that uh, I I welcome with uh, open arms uh, that he'll be able to have a little element of the atmosphere there this weekend. And I like that I have seen. I don't watch regularly, but I see things here and there. And I know that his relationship with West Virginia has really like. Um, I don't, I don't think it's repair because I think it's as much McAfee himself as anything else, just like in his head, kind of how he felt. But uh, it seems like he and West Virginia are, are like this more than they have been in a really long time. And I think that's incredible for, for both sides. Ren Baker has obviously yeah. been a part of that. Yeah, he's helped yeah. in mending some of that. I think some of it was Pat himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but either way, uh, that's awesome because I do think when you're a league that's talking about getting attention, whether it's Ari and TuneIn or – Who's bigger than Pat freaking McAfee, yeah. man? Like right now in sports media. So yeah, being a West Virginia guy, talk about those Mountaineers. And if they win, he'll be talking a whole heck of a lot about them. So that's that's a nice little ace up their right. sleeve potentially as well. All right, here's here. I, I give. I'm trying to do the interesting nuggets. You guys break down usually the games and all that, and I can do that too. But this is the uh, this is the 61st meeting. Penn State has dominated mm -hmm. this rivalry. Just like if you have. 
Uh, for years, Texas dominated OU. That series now very close. Or A&M and Texas. And this, <laughs> Say, wait a second. <laughs> what? It's getting closer. No, it's, no, it's but, not, but, this, but it's not but, that lopsided. It's very, no, but the, like, there's a lot of these rivalries. This is the 61st meeting. Penn State has won 49 with two ties. It's like Texas Baylor is more apt than yeah, Texas that's Oklahoma. Really good, yeah. yeah, West Virginia did win three in a row in the 50s, but since 1956. West Virginia's won twice. Now, they haven't played every year. There's been a gap. There was a huge gap from 92. They played, and then they didn't play again until uh, last year. So there's been gaps in this series. But West, this is one of those that's very one-sided. West Virginia did well in the 20s, 30s, and I think it was the 40s and 50s. But, man, they, it would be a hell of a win for West Virginia. For a lot of reasons. Yeah, for a I, lot of reasons. I, I haven't made my pick. We don't have to do that until we have to do that. But uh, hell of a, uh, and again, it, Penn State ha has won the last five dating back all the way to 1989. Yeah, I think West Virginia fans are aware of how lopsided this has been. And, and yeah, I guess for those that don't know, and now you're aware of, of how lopsided I guess it's been. But you know what? The thing about that, none of that matters one single bit heading into this weekend. That doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Because all that matters is what happens on Saturday. So, um, yeah, I mean, Penn State, there's a lot of reasons to go with them. Just that you think they're the better team. The history perspective, there is something to that a lot of times. Uh, but I think if West Virginia was ever ready to to jump up and change that record a little bit and add another notch on their side of the win column, this is percolating like a golden opportunity to be able to do that. I had somebody uh, – I, I agree. The Penn and thank you for the scheduling, by the way, because we just ran over three other games. And I know everybody's going to play like a, a better opponent. Not everybody goes like big, you know, matinee – you know, bright lights on the first weekend of the season. But West Virginia, definitely the most interesting game in the entire league this weekend. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they scheduled the way that they did and I, uh, and putting a, a big-time game out there this Saturday. I don't know. Uh, our Graw, the last time Penn State went on the road for a non-conference game was Auburn. It didn't go very well for Auburn that game. Might go the same way. So thank very you very well much. Very well could. R. Graw for that uh, note. I don't have the history, but I do remember, you know, like there was that stat about Alabama when they played Texas and Austin. I mean, like they, they played games away from Tuscaloosa, but most of the time it was neutral. It had been forever since they had done a non-conference game on the road. And so there's some teams like that that when you have a 100,000-seat stadium, you don't go on the road very often. You don't. All right, so there's that. We covered them all, at least those four.